everybody, it's the Frytech family of five. Welcome to worship. We want to tell you all that we miss you very much and we miss worshiping in person. We look forward to meeting again when it's safe. We all miss church. Olivia, what do you miss? Church friends. Carson, what do you miss? I miss worshiping with everybody and all my friends. Lincoln, what do you miss the most about church? Uh, my friend and the friends. The friends. I definitely miss fellowship and catching up with you all. We hope that you are finding God's work in these challenging times, and we ask that you clear your mind, your hearts, and prepare for worship. God bless. Bye. 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 I'll be reading from Psalm chapter 66, verses 8 through 20. Bless our God, O peoples, let the sound of his praise be heard. Who has kept us among the living and has not let our feet slip? For thou, O God, hast tested us. Thou hast tried us as silver is tried. Thou didst bring us into the net. Thou didst lay affection on our loins. Thou did let men ride over our heads. We went through the fire and through the water. Yet thou hast brought us forth to a spacious place. I will come into thy house with thy burnt offerings. I will pay thee my vows, that which my lips uttered and my mouth promised when I was in trouble. I will offer these burnt offerings of the fatlings with the smoke of the sacrifice of rams. I will make an offering of bulls and goats. Come and hear all you who fear God, and I will tell what he has done for me. I cried aloud to him, and he was extolled with my tongue. I had cherished inequity in my heart, but the Lord had not listened. But truly God has listened. He has given heed to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God, because he has not rejected my prayer or removed his steadfast love from me. To the choir master with stringed instruments, a psalm, a song, the word of God for the people of God. This morning I'm reading John 14, verses 15 through 21. If you love me, you will obey what I command, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever, the Spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him, 
because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commands and obeys them, he is the one who loves me. He who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love him and show myself to him. The Word of God for the people of God. Hi kids! Did you know that studies have shown that more than one half of all children become attached to a teddy bear, a favorite blanket, or some other object that helps to comfort them whenever they are afraid, sick, or upset? Some of you may be embarrassed to admit that you have a teddy bear or a security blanket or that you ever had one. Well, there's no reason to be embarrassed. In fact, some of our church kids would like to share what brings them comfort and security. A teddy bear, a security blanket, or pets can give us great comfort, especially at bedtime when you are sick or when you are separated from your parents. Jesus understood that we all need help in times of trouble. When he was here on earth, he was a source of help and comfort to his disciples. When he was preparing to return to heaven, he knew that there would be times the disciples would need help and comfort and that he would not be able to give it to them. He told the disciples that he would ask his father to send them another comforter who would stay with them forever. And that's exactly what he did. He asked the father and he sent the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the part of God which lives inside of us. It's that spirit that helps us know right from wrong and teaches us how to love and care for each other. He is there to comfort and guide us. I don't know about you, but I'm glad that Jesus asked God to send his Holy Spirit to comfort me when I'm afraid or sick. We may outgrow our need for a teddy bear or a security blanket, but we never outgrow the need for the comfort and guidance of God's Holy Spirit. Let's pray. Put your feet together. Dear Father, we thank you for sending the Holy Spirit to be our comforter and guide. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
to pray for those in our congregation. On Monday, Lincoln Freitag will be going up to the University of Iowa for a surgery to get rid of the antibiotic resistant infection in his ears as well as correct some breathing issues. And we pray that everything goes well and there are no complications, especially because it's Lincoln and he has complications with medical procedures. We recognize that Tom Schneering will be headed to radiation, his first radiation appointment on Wednesday here in Burlington. Would you take a minute and pray with me? God Almighty, we come before you on this day thanking you that you have given us the Holy Spirit so we are never alone. You are our creator and Jesus is our redeemer and the Spirit is our guider and we are so glad we have some help here on this side of heaven. Life is hard. Life is challenging right now. With all of the changes for COVID and how we can't reach out and touch the ones that we love so very much. So God, we ask that you might help us reach out to the ones that we know. And even the ones we kind of know. We pray for all of those whose mental health is just really taking a hit. We pray for all of those who desperately long to be with their families in nursing homes and just even across the street. Help us, dear Lord, to be guided into your pause, to react with grace, and come together in the prayer that your Son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as... Forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As Easter people, we believe in encountering the resurrected Christ, the one who triumphed over the cross and rose from the grave the one who stands eternal before the throne of our heavenly God. Our Lord Jesus Christ, who says to all his first disciples, I will not leave you as orphans. In other words, you will never be alone. I will not abandon you. You need not feel like motherless children. To all of those who love Jesus and obey his commands, Jesus promised to send his own spirit his own breath, his own inner life. Jesus tells us that he will never leave us, but send the Counselor to be with us forever, the Spirit of Truth. I will not leave you as orphans, Jesus promises. I will come to you. And this is where we find strength in our weakness. For Christ is risen. He has he risen, risen indeed. indeed. And God lives in and if we take note that Jesus says the world cannot accept the Spirit because it neither knows Him nor sees Him. It is a sad world that we are living in today. And it was a sad world before when we were living in the land of pre-COVID. Dave and I have, over the course of time, had 24 kids in and out of our homes. When parents have made different decisions other than protecting they're kiddos, and these children have felt abandoned, alone, in the middle of the night, desiring their mom, mommy, and they're just stuck with strangers. And so they act out in challenging behaviors, and there are great disappointments when the choices of their parents go unchanged. It is real to feel abandoned and to feel alone. And Jesus tells us, that we will never be alone. But so many don't even recognize that. And even Christians for decades still haven't connected their heart and their head with the knowledge and the peace that we are not alone. Long before we accept Christ as our Savior, God is working and the Counselor is working and comforting us and pleading with our spirit so that we might recognize God. And that's called pervenient grace. And after we become awake to God's love, we recognize that God is working with us, and that is called justifying grace. We know 
that God is always moving us along the spectrum of pervenient, justifying, and sanctifying grace. There's a great Christian song I love, and it's called I Am Not Alone. And it's recorded by Carrie Job. And I would really hope that you would take a moment to Google that and watch it on YouTube. And it, it talks about I am not alone. God, you go before me. God, you will never leave me. In the midst of deep sorrow, I see your light breaking through. The dark of the night will not overtake me, for I am pressing in to you. Lord, you fight my every battle. Oh, I will never fear. I am not alone. I am called as your own. It's so much better in song format, so please take a moment and Google that. But we recognize that there are so many in our neighborhoods, in our families, in our world that are just enchantized with God that they haven't recognized this love that surpasses all understanding, to have this companionship with Christ. And as believers, we are to allow the Holy Spirit to help us plead into the world for the sake of the brokenhearted. And we know that there is no shortage of brokenhearted. We think about the 55-year-old factory worker who's been laid off, and he has no other prospects for a job. He's feeling too old and too weary to consider training for something else. And without skills that could be reworked, this person feels alone. Unemployed and living off pension funds. No, wait. No pension funds. This person doesn't know about the abiding love and the presence of Christ. Where is their hope? And we know right now there are conscious, countless people like that. People who do not know that Christ lives so that they can also live. What about the elderly person who's been married for 52 years and now their spouse is no longer with her? She nods off in front of the television set with a half-eaten, frozen meal before her. She's alone in a house that's way too big for her because her kids are grown and moved off to other states. What if she knew that Jesus will not leave her as an orphan? And God will not abandon her. What if the 32-year-old orphan whose parents have died has no place to go for Thanksgiving knew that God will never abandon? Or what about the guy who now is 18 and is aged out of the system and has no one, nowhere, nothing? God has not abandoned. What difference would it make a relationship with Christ with these people? Or what about the person with a terminal illness whose body is dying and lives alone in pain? Not even because of the COVID rules, but just because she is alone. For her and for a million others throughout the world, this dreaded disease of terminal illness without the knowledge of Christ. And here Jesus says, I will not leave you as an orphan. God will never abandon you. And we could go on and on. The teenager who's different from all the rest. The husband whose spouse has left him. The business person whose business is failing. Or the parent whose child has rebelled and left home. There are countless in the world and they live in communities all around us. With you alone, without hope, rejected, and orphaned. And so who will tell them? Who will show them of the love of God? Who will introduce them to Jesus? John chapter 14. He's sitting with the disciples in the upper room. The candles are lit for the Passover meal, and they've been burned, and it's time to go. And one of the disciples has already fled. The gathering and his betrayal has shocked all of them, and of course Peter's denial is predicted, and the pain of the cross awaits them all. In the midst of this uncertain gathering, Jesus reaches out to love them, his great love for us. Jesus comes to us. He comes to us with the power of the Holy Spirit. He reveals himself to those 
who will have them, the Holy Spirit that sends the messengers to the poor, to the unemployed, to the young, to the elderly, to the sick and rejected, the unhappy, the sorrowful, the lonely and dying. Who is it that will say to them, God has not left you as orphans. Jesus will never abandon you. It is us. We have been entrusted with the good news. We are the Easter people. We are the ones sent forth to the lost and the lonely and the fearful that God's love is living in us. We are the ones and the creature of the comfort that recognizes that the culture is saturated by technology, especially now. Technology is powerful, but a computer has no power to heal a broken heart. Zoom meetings are great, but it's not like being with each other. Smartphones can't fill the void of a loss. A flat screen TV can't bring us comfort when we face tragedy. There is no substitute for experiencing the love of Jesus Christ, for that power is enormous. That power can heal. It's a power to make people well, to give people the power to lift their heads and fill their empty hearts. It gives people the power not only to be healed, but just by coming into the presence of Jesus. It's what enabled me to think of that song, I am not alone in the midst of writing this message. The Holy Spirit is with us and is still with us today. We are commissioned in Matthew 28 to go out and make disciples, to tell everyone we meet about the love of God who has been found in Jesus Christ. And in the midst of this pause that we are currently in, we can take that commissioning and use it in our lives as we react to the news with quiet grace, as we are examples of how to respect leaders while our kids are listening, as we reach out, I'm serious, reach out and call somebody. Seven digits, 20 minutes, reach out and call somebody. That love and action for the connections, because we know that people need people. Reach out and touch someone. I sound like a phone commercial, but uh, people are feeling alone. They're feeling abandoned. They have lost sight of the heart and the head knowledge that Christ is risen. He is risen indeed, and that changes our lives. And so as the first disciples did on that Holy Spirit, took the spirit of truth that came to them and took residence in their hearts, we know the church grew and grew. In this time where we are the church outside of this building, where we have churches in all of our homes, we are growing. And I thank you for that. And I ask the God Almighty that we might go out into the community through the use of our phones and our conversations and our yards with our neighbors six feet apart, recognizing the power of the Holy Spirit that's come to us, that we are not abandoned, we are not orphans, for we are a child of God, today, tomorrow, and forever. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen.
We miss you. See you soon. 